Good evening, everyone. Hi, my name's Arshalahi, and today we're talking about deal sourcing, which is, I believe, the money-making way. And we're going to be talking about how this is the solution for you to become, and I don't use the term very often, but I'm going to say financially free. So if you can, just give me a quick hello. Let me know that you can hear me nice and loudly, clearly, and let's get moving forward. So why are you here? You're here very simply because you want to move towards a better you. And I completely understand that. I've been in that position. And tonight we're going to be looking at the powerful strategy, which is deal sourcing. And as a result of becoming a deal sourcer, the amount of deals, the amount of opportunities that you're going to be putting yourself in front of, which as a result will make you a lot of money. So what we're going to be looking at, in around 90 minutes time, you'll learn the simple three-step system to deal trading success. I'm going to be giving you the fastest way to make property cash flow. That's right for you. And then finally, how to get started with no money and no experience. Now, can you just let me know that you're in the right place, please, whether you can give me a quick heads up yes or no, or whether you've uh, logged onto the wrong webinar, because I've given you three very powerful po points there as to what we're gonna be covering tonight. I wanna give you the three-step process to deal set trading success. I'm gonna be showing you the fastest way to make property cash flow, that's right for you. And then finally, how to get started with no money and no experience. So, okay, so everyone says yes, definitely in the right place, okay. And just so you know, guys, this is a real interactive session, so please stay with us. So before we go anywhere, anywhere, I've put up this slide here because there are four main reasons or the four main areas that we need to concentrate on in business. That's not just property, but in business full stop. And these are four core areas that I think of the most beneficial to everyone in business. So first one, mindset. Do you think that you are born a property professional or can you learn to be one? And I'm asking you these questions, so please answer them in the comments box so that I know where we are. Now, personally speaking, I believe that everyone can learn to become a property professional. Now, I wasn't always born a property professional. Yes, I was born around people that had property, but I had to learn how to become one. And the reason why I say that is because I wrote a book called Boom, Bust and Back Again. And as the title suggests, I nearly went bust. And I had to learn so much from that journey to make me the property professional that I am today. The next point that I point out here is desire. Do you want to learn about property so that you can find a way to make money alongside your family and life commitments? Now, that's a big one because we all only have limited time during the day. Whether life comes in the way, whether work comes in the way, there's only so much we can fit in. So we have to make sure that we're working what I would consider smartly, not smart and not hard. So between the hours of nine to five or whether you're working nine to five and working within the evening, we've got to work smart in order to effectively be able to generate enough cash flow, which then goes on to finance. Would you like to have surplus cash flow from dealing with property with no risk? Now, I put that up there and I said, I know it sounds too good to be true, but tonight the strategy that we're looking at is the fact that we don't actually have to buy any property to get involved in property. Now, one of the questions that are coming, he goes, Arsh, it's about getting over the hurdle of I can learn to do it. Okay, that's interesting. And thanks for coming, uh, coming through with that, Chris. And then finally, it's a massive one, freedom. Do you want the freedom to access learning from anywhere in the world, as well as the opportunity to make it fit your learning style, as well as have the freedom as to do what you want, where you want, and how you want, and answer to no one. 
So these are my four core elements which I believe I work around in life. Mindset, desire, finance and freedom. So hopefully you can resonate with that. And we're going to keep going through these throughout the day. So John has says freedom. John wants the freedom. Okay, that's great. Now, so why should you listen to me? So for those that don't know uh, anything about me, my name's Arsh Ilahi. I'm an uh, Amazon bestseller. So I wrote a book called Boom Bust and Back Again. Um, I've been involved in property approximately 19 years. And within that period, I've built up quite a substantial property portfolio. So I've got approximately 1,100 tenants, uh, which spans well over 100, 100, I think it's 140 odd properties. Um, as well as that, I'm a trainer and a mentor to hundreds of property professionals, not only in the UK, but internationally as well. So I've trained people that are based in Saudi Arabia, I've trained people in China, Japan, uh, Australia, and these are all guys that are wanting to make property a success within the UK. So I train a lot of people on that. I'm considered a property expert. I still never get my head around that, to be fair. I'm considered a property expert. When I say that, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be asked to write in property publications, uh, UK property publications, and two of the well-known ones are YPN Magazine, which is your property network, and the HMO Magazine. I've also featured in lots of other trade shows and done talks all over the country. Um, I'm experienced, and the reason why I say that is that uh, I consider myself to be a property veteran who has survived the brink of bust of recession and knows what works. The reason why I say that is because it's not like I've been on a training workshop myself last weekend and today I'm releasing a course, which seems to be a common theme nowadays. But I've actually been out there, done it, and everything that I talk about is stuff that I've actually put into practice myself. And then finally, it's about efficiency. How I started a deal trading business on a shoestring budget and made within the region of six million pounds within three years. So all the things that I've talked about are the things, all the things that I'm going to talk about are things that I've done in my property journey. So hopefully you're going to benefit from that as well. So I need you to answer this question for me, please. What is your, what is, what is it that you consider as success? Is it a monetary value? Is it something that you aspire to do? What does success look like to you? So I've put up on the slides there, is it that you want to achieve £3,000 per month cash flow? Is it £5,000 per month cash flow? Is it £10,000 a month cash flow? It could be something quite personal to you. It could be that you want to help family members. It could be that you want to build a school or you want to deal with disadvantaged children. There's so many things that I've heard of. But, you know, what's your reason why? This is your way of actually stating your claim right now. So what is it that you want to do? Why do you want to get involved in property? So Andrew says that I want to make circle within the region of 10 grand. And the strategy that I want to kind of use is a service accommodation. And I want to achieve it within 24 months. OK, so quite a few people come out with some quite big claims. Uh, Mark has come in and says that I want to achieve 10,000 pounds a month, which is a fantastic, which is a fantastic target to have. Uh, Sam says, right now as a uni university student, my success goal is to be able to have disposable money after my rent has come out to maintain my loans. Okay. And then we've got Steve says, leave a legacy for my family. And that's a fantastic one, Steve, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the reason why I say that is because I understand the fact that everyone wants to leave something for the family. I myself, I have a very young family, so I've got two very young daughters who are currently six and four. And uh, my why, shall we say, is that to, to create a legacy and leave a legacy for them uh, so that they have surplus funds to be able to do what they want, when they want, and have the ability and the freedom to do so without having the need uh, to go out. Well, when I say go out to work, I'm still going to make sure that they work, but they have that choice as to what they do and when they do. So quite a few of you are coming through. And say, well, my uh, Mikhail says, I want £2,000 a month. I want to generate it through HMOs. Uh, and he wants to do it within 36 months. 
Uh, Carl says, I'm pension planning for the next five years. Yvonne says, I'm going to make £5,000 a month passive income. Uh, generational wealth, I want to make £50,000 a month to help family and give myself the freedom to do what I want. Wow, okay, that's a big, that's a big task. So um, £50,000 a month is £600,000 a year. And that, if that's cash flow, I'm hoping that's cash flow or is that turnover? Uh, to help family give, you know, for that kind of level of income, that really is a real target. So you've got to have some big goals there. So creating a creating a target is one thing. So what does success look like for you? So we've all, all kind of put down a monetary figure. Could be three, five, ten thousand pounds, whatever it may be. You know, and this all comes down to the style of lifestyle that you have. Now, next question is, what's going to be the strategy that's going to get you there and the strategy I suppose comes down to a number of things your ability and also the amount of money that you have at your disposal and when we say at your disposal there's no point saying that I want £10,000 a month I'm going to do it through buy to let so I'm going to buy a load of buy to lets but at the moment I don't have the money to buy one because that kind of doesn't work because if you can't buy the first one how are we going to progress to the property number two three four five and six so we need to be realistic and we have to need to have a look at what tools have we got in our toolbox right now have we got funds to buy one if we haven't got funds where are we going to look for funds are we going to find a JV partner are we going to try and do some rent to rent deals are we going to try and do service accommodation deals so what is it you might turn around and say, well, I'm not interested in owning any property. I'm literally going to make money from controlling other people's properties and deal source and deal trade and make between two and 5,000 per property. And as a result, I'm going to then use that money to act towards purchasing properties or put towards a deposit to purchase properties. So you've got to have a real clear goal as to what is it that you want to do and where you want to go and what's going to, get, what's going to be the vehicle that gets you there. And if you can put that within a time frame, we've now created almost like a mini vision. So what's your time frame? Some people said that they want to do it within 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. Now, believe it or not, back in the year 2008, I set myself a 17 year time frame. Seems quite specific, but the goal was very clear. The goal was that on the on the 11th of November 2025, I'm going to retire. So why the 11th of November 2025? How can I be so specific? It's because I've, I've put it so that my whole portfolio, all the finance and all the lending and everything comes to zero on the 11th of November 2025. So it's all geared on capital, it's all geared on capital repayment. So therefore, I have a very clear vision as to where I want to be. So on the 12th of November, I turn 45 years old, and as a result, I then have a portfolio which will be absolutely debt zero. And as a result, I decide what I do, where I want to do, uh, where I want to go, and how I want to go there. And so, do you know how? So, like I said, my goal is to retire at the age of 45. I'm going to be doing that. Uh, my time frame is 17, oh, back then it was 17 years. My strategy was to purchase high cash flow and HMOs, as well as deal sourcing, deal trading, as well as some other developments that I have going through at the moment. So that's all been put into a cash, into a pot. The pot then pays down debt. As a result, that then gets me to that point of the 11th of November 2025, becoming completely debt free. So does everyone kind of see how we've done that? So quite a few of you have come through and says, my strategy is to generate funds through sourcing great property data, uh, deals, which I will use to build my own portfolio. Um, okay, fantastic. So we get some really positive messages that come through. Really, really positive messages, so it's fantastic to watch. Now, we're gonna talk about beliefs and actions now, because I believe that our beliefs shape our actions. If we believe it's impossible to find deals, then we are likely to act in a way that confirms this. Now, just read that again. 
our beliefs shape our actions. If we believe it's impossible to find deals, then we're likely to act in a way that confirms this. If we believe it's possible to find deals, then our actions will prove that we can. Now, the reason why I say this is because sometimes we think, well, you know, to be fair, uh, I don't think I can do this. I don't think that I can do this. And you kind of talk yourself out of it. And I've been there too. Just so you know, this is a natural part of progression. When we all start out, we all look at things and we think, well, you know what, that sounds fantastic, but I can't do that. Believe it or not, we have to turn that I can't into I can. And we're going to take it by baby steps. And the reason why I say baby steps is because we're not all going to become deal sourcing kings and queens overnight. We've got to take it on a step by step process. We're going to understand a little bit. And tonight we're going to be looking at the, at the process of what kind of deal should we be looking at? Where should we be looking? And then it will then start evolving into how do we how do we progress them? How do we appraise them? How do we monetize them? So it is a step by step process. Now the one thing I say is that uh, I said to my I said to a sibling the other day, uh, they said I don't believe we can do this. And I said, well, yes, you can do it. And I said, sure, I'll tell you what, we're going to set a challenge. When was the last time you saw a pink car? They go, I haven't seen a pink car in ages. And say to yourself, I want to see a pink car within the next 24 to 48 hours. And I pretty much guarantee that you're going to see a pink car within 24 to 48 hours. Because you're now putting it at the forefront of your mind that you can do this. You have the ability to do this. And you're going to positively make a way of doing this. Have you ever done that by yourself? Uh, have you ever done that? Just, you know, by all means, feel free to be interactive here. Tell yourself that you can do stuff. Even when you think that you can't, you've got to remove any element of doubt and say, you know what, guys, I've got this. When it comes to actions, having all the belief and no action is pointless. Because action is the thing that brings it to real life. So it's only action that will transform the quality of your life. Don't let a fear of failure or a fear of success stop you from grabbing the success that you deserve. With a big enough why, you can overcome any how. Now, this might seem all quite generic stuff, but just be true to yourself here. Have any of you ever let the fear of failure or the fear of success stop you from starting something? Just feel free to say yes or no. I know personally, previously, it has definitely stopped me. When I kept thinking, uh, uh, now just so you know, I, I had a development company uh, from the year 2000 to 2008, and we were doing extremely well. Then the property market crashed, and as a result, that took that company near enough down under. Now, I could have very easily sat back and said, you know what, I played around with property, it's cost me a lot of money, I'm not gonna go and do it again. The fear of failure kind of said, you know what, I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna be in that position again. But then I had to say to myself, I did so many things right that I won't make that mistake again, or I, I will definitely make it a success. So don't let the fear of failure stop you from moving on. So Steve Jowett says, yes, on more than one occasion, everyone has these thoughts. It is normal, it is natural. People will question you. Even your loved ones will question you. I get questioned every day. So just so you know, I'm about, well, when I say about to launch a new business, there's uh, a new, uh, there's something that we're launching hopefully over the next month or so. And people are saying to me, Osh, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. It's a waste of your time, it's a waste of your energy. And I said, you know what, to be fair, I don't think it is. But I'm going to give it a bloody good go anyway. And that's my mental and positive attitude that you have to adopt to make sure that you're going to succeed in property. The one thing I will say to you is that not every day is going to be like roses. So you need to have a positive mental attitude to succeed in property. There are going to be days 
where solicitors let you down. There are going to be days where mortgage brokers let you down. There's going to be days where vendors let you down. I've got one deal at the moment going through in Birmingham where the vendor, every day, I'm sure he must wake up and say, you know what, let's see how much I can annoy Arsh today. One day the deal's on, tomorrow the deal's off. It's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. But guess what, guys? I'm, I've become immune to it. I don't listen to it anymore. And I said to him on Friday, if you don't want it, feel free, you know, feel free to walk away. I don't let the fear of failure stop me from that. I said, I'll find the guy another property. Yours is not the only property in Birmingham. And as he goes, oh, oh, she goes, you're really walking away. I said, well, I'm not going to sit here every day watching you change your mind. I've got better things to do. And as a result, guess what? He goes, oh, okay. Guess what? The deal's back on. So Tom says, the battle is every day, sabotaging himself. You know what, Tom, that's very, that's very honest of you. Don't beat yourself up over it. This is the progression of life. So why, deal tra why trade deals? Now, the reason why I started deal trading, very simply, is that I wanted to start seeing all the best deals myself. So I thought, well, if I put myself out there, I start marketing, I start speaking to agents, I start speaking and tell them who I am, start to become the authoritative figure within the area. By actually becoming a deal trader, when people approach me with deals, I can then look at it and appraise it initially from the point of view is that, do I want it myself? Will I keep it for myself? Would it be a good addition for my portfolio. Now, just so you know, there's no there's no rule or nothing set in stone to say that I have to keep it. All I do, I give myself the opportunity to ask myself that question. Am I going to keep it myself? Would I like it for myself? Will it make money for myself? If not, I will trade it. So my rule is that anything within Wolverhampton or pretty much an hour circumference of Wolverhampton, we will look to try and keep. Anything in excess of that, we will look to trade. So that's my parameters. One of the real benefits of deal trading is that you don't actually need any money to get started. You just need lots of determination. And one of the biggest factors or one of the biggest benefits of trading deals is that there's no risk attached to it. When I say no risk attached to it, you're not buying a property. You're, all you're doing is you're potentially putting the deal together for an investor. And the reason why I say that is because I call myself almost like a glorified estate agent. Vendor comes to me, Arsh, I want to sell the property. Great, okay. We package it up and we find an investor for it. The investor pays us for our time and it produces fast results and it's very easy and quick to set up. So literally, it's very easy for someone to set up as a deal sourcer and it's easy and quick to scale. So when we say scale, it all depends on how much time and effort that you want to put into it. The more effort you put into it, the more chance of you succeeding and increasing the volume of your business. And it produces fast results. And we'll talk about the level of results. So just to give you an example, you know, if we're doing a rent-to-rent -rent deal, you can have the money within your bank and complete it within the space of seven days. Other purchases may take approximately four weeks, between four to eight weeks. But you can actually make, when I say holiday-sized bundles of cash from hobby amounts of time, it doesn't actually take a lot of your time. You'll spend a lot of your time appraising properties and saying yes no yes no yes no i like this one i don't like that one that one doesn't work that one's too much money i don't see the angle with that one and it's the fastest way to reach your property cash flow goals as well as that every property that you look at you will learn something about now just so you know guys you guys probably already received the emails that i send out on a day-to-day -day basis and i consider them to be quite educational I set them out so that they're quite educational so that people look at it and they can pretty much determine whether it's a deal for them within a very short space of time. Would you agree that that's correct?
so that when you're looking at the property, you see it, you say, okay, I understand it's in Liverpool, I understand that it's potentially already a potential, already a HMO, potential to become a HMO, here's how much it's currently generating, here's how much it can generate, here's what I need to do, here's the capital that's required, and away we go. So as a result, I believe that I put out the best dual sourcing adverts or the actual opportunity laid out in the best format in the industry bar none. Uh, okay, so brilliant. Okay, so Andrew says yes in 10 minutes on Friday. Brilliant. Okay, so let's start moving this forward. Step one, what is the deal? Now, this is the most important part, and the reason why I say that is because I do not want any of you to get caught up in the trap of becoming a one-trick pony. And I say this very clearly, that do not set your stall out of only going out to find one style of property. So what is a deal? Is it something, buying something below market value? Is it buying a property in need of renovation? Is it something that's already income producing? Is it already producing a good ROI? Now ROI means return on investment. Is it something with good potential of capital growth? Is it something that is sustainable? Now, I know lots of deal sources that contact me pretty much every day and say, Arsh, okay, I looked at a property, it didn't have 25% below market value, it wasn't uh, a true BNB deal, so we walked away from it. And I said, guys, okay, I think you're missing the bigger picture. You looked at it from one angle, and there's potentially the best part, 10 angles to look at it from. And so in essence, they've given that property the best part 10% chance of it succeeding. And so therefore, when I look at a property, and let's just keep the numbers quite simple. If the property is £100,000, and I went to a vendor and said, okay, well, on the basis that I need to offer 25% below market value, my offer is circa £75,000. If they turn around to me and say, well, Arsh, I, first of all, I can't accept that because first of all, my mortgage is already £92,000. Does that mean that you're then going to walk away from the deal because there isn't sufficient equity in the deal? Or are you going to look at other ways to try and skin the cat? Excuse the pun. What would you do? What would you do? So would you walk away or would you try and look at it from a different angle? Because this is what I do. I look at it from all angles. So, okay, so let's just see what you're running with the example that she owns £92,000 mortgage on a £100,000 property. Yes, there's a little bit of equity. Why is she going? What is she doing? Does she require the capital out of the deal? How realistic is 100,000? How long is left on the mortgage check? There's so many different ways. Can we do a rent to rent? Could we do a lease option on it? Does it have any form of development opportunity? Does it have any form of opportunity to generate some form of cash flow? Is it a property in a good enough area with sufficient demand? So these are all the things that I'm looking at before I go back to the vendor. So I can go back to the vendor and say, okay, uh, I understand that the property values are worth around 100,000. I understand that you owe around 92,000. Now, I can't buy off you at the price that I wanted to buy off you at, but I'll tell you what, that was my first option that I wanted to try and buy at X amount, but I understand that I can't. So I've come here today with plan B, C, D, and E. I try and go back to them with multiple opportunities. Now, sometimes I question, am I making it too complicated with a vendor? But then I also say no, because I'm giving them choices. I'm giving them the opportunity to say, okay, I like 
the fact that you've given me a choice as opposed to saying no I can only buy at 75,000 you owe 92,000 on it therefore in order for me to do a deal you're gonna to have to pay the difference that does not work in today's aid day and age so we go in with a different angle we go in with lots of different angles we try and say okay we understand that you owe this here's what I think we can do We've got one angle that we can do this, we've got another angle where we can do this, we've got another angle that we can do this. Now I released, um, I think, a development opportunity by email over the last couple of days. Uh, it's a piece of land and we've come up with multiple scenarios for the vendor and he came back and said, okay, I like plan C. He didn't like plan A, he didn't like plan B. That's fine, but if I didn't have plan C, I wouldn't have had a deal. So I say to myself, why do we need to choose one? Why not look for all the angles and find the ones that work for you and also the owner? There's this thing called a win-win scenario. A real deal sourcer will be the ones that are the most creative and create the win-win scenarios and doesn't just look for them out, look out for themselves. Now, believe it or not, there's so many ways that you can source deals every week. There's some scenario, uh, there's some platforms where it costs you absolutely nothing, but will generate you multiple deals every week. And just so you know, these are all ones that I'm actually doing myself actively. So everything that we talk about today is the stuff that I'm doing actively. So just to give you an example, social media. I'm assuming you're all in the Facebook groups, you're all in the LinkedIn groups. How many deals get pushed through those platforms every day and every week? Tens, over the few weeks, hundreds. How many deals are good, how many deals are bad? That's the question. So that means that's something that you have to approach. You have to uh, you have to build on your network. You have to keep approaching. You have to keep appraising and say, okay, here's what I think I can do. And moving on to networks, building your network of estate agents. Just to give you an example, over the last few weeks, I've been building my relationships with estate agents nationwide because I've launched a platform called Property Investor App. And if you haven't already gone and done so, please go to propertyinvestorapp.co.uk. You can also download uh, the mobile app called Property Investor from the App Store. So that is the UK's first property investment platform where you can sell deals. So there's my first tip for you. So I've been working with estate agents all over the country. And as a result of networking one of them, uh, one of the UK's largest uh, auction houses, who I can't disclose who they are yet, uh, are interested and we're meeting this week to see how we can get exclusivity to all their deals. But this was as a result of networking with the right people in the right locations, and I met them through initial a social media platform. So it's all about building your network and building, understanding, and meeting who you're, who you're working with and how you can create that win-win scenario. Now, networking meetings, so majority of you will be familiar with things like the Property Investor Network meetings, uh, PPN meetings, uh, LANL meetings, uh, BNI meetings, and these are all networking meetings. And so this gives you an opportunity where not only you can try and find people that are trying to sell their deals, but also uh, meet up with people who may also have money. So therefore you can actually build your investor database just by literally going to networking meetings. <clears throat> How many times have you been to a networking meeting and someone stood up and said, I'm looking to buy properties in this location. If you've got a deal, please come to the back of the room and we can have a chat during the break. And so therefore you can build your database just from doing that alone. So if you go to two to three of those meetings a month, all of a sudden, if you take 10 cards away from each meeting, you're starting to build your database by 30 people a month, which every year is gonna be the best part, <coughs> excuse me, the best part of 500 people a year. Then you've got bandit boards. So bandit boards are like the yellow Corex boards, which you can attach to lampposts and say, you know, we buy your house for cash or, you know, we can complete. 
Now, one of the things that I'm still doing is that I actually advertise around uh, football grounds. So we've got some boards around Wolverhampton Wanderers football grounds and some of the other local football grounds, and they do quite well for us. And the reason why I do that is just purely because uh, you've got to remember that we've got a cap, uh, capsulated, capsulated, hopefully that's a word, uh, but a targeted audience so that when they're watching the football match, they can see our board, which is literally uh, by the halfway line. Then we still we still look at uh, targeting supermarkets, local shops, so where you put in the uh, little post, uh, postcard size uh, adverts in uh, local shops. We work very closely with stuff like HMI registers, planning registers, billboards and also a very active uh, interactive website as well as Google SEO research, uh, sorry, Google SEO um, searches which generates us quite a few leads every month. Sorry, have you got any questions whilst we're, whilst we're going on? I'm, I'm just conscious that we're going through at quite a pace. So, okay, just waiting. So someone's coming in with a question. So uh, one person has come in and straight away said, ask what's your most effective way? So if you're looking to start, just so that you know, guys, there's um, there's different ways of advertising for deals. When I say advertising for deals, going out to approach. So you've got the direct and non, uh, you've got direct and non-direct methods. So direct is where you go direct to vendor, where you're speaking directly to the owner and you're trying to appraise the deal with them. So when it appraise the deal with them and try and get a deal done. The other is non-direct, where is where you could, in essence, be speaking to agents and uh, speaking to agents who will then be building you, uh, creating you a funnel of leads. Now, people say to me, well, why would I speak to agents when I could probably get a better deal off the owner? Now, that's a great question. My answer is, how many properties does that vendor own? So they'll probably own maybe one stroke two properties. Would you agree? Now, how many property deals do estate agents have advertising on their books at any one time? I've worked on average, an average around 50 properties. So would you rather spend most of your time trying to chase vendors who've got one property and not real and, and a massive return on business as opposed to an estate agent who, okay, you may not get a larger percentage of discount from an estate agent, but will provide you with a volume of leads every day or every week or every month. Does that make sense? It's all about creating the next deal and the next funnel. So Natasha says, do you advertise as a company or as an individual? Now, Natasha, I actually advertise as a company. So I own a company called We Buy Properties Fast. Uh, I set that company up in two, uh, the year 2000. And we were, we were one of the first companies to advertise on the high street. So when I say advertise, we set up an office on the high street. And what worked really well for us is that we actually started opening Saturdays and Sundays. And we created almost like what's considered a deal clinic. And we had vendors coming in and talking to us about their properties uh, on the weekends where they came and we made them a cup of tea, we listened to their stories, we went and viewed their properties, and we did a deal on the weekend. So Natasha says, how do you build rapport with an agent? Okay, Natasha, great question. Agents, believe it or not, are incentivized to sell properties. They make money when they sell a property. So in actual fact, they will sell a property to a deal sourcer or they will work with deal sources, providing that you're not going in and telling them a pack of lies. So, one of my friends is a very, uh, one of my close friends is an estate agent, and he goes, oh, she goes, do you know how many people call me every day and say, hi, my name is X and X, I'm a property investor from London, 
uh, I'm looking for properties. We'll look at properties and we'll look at the smelly properties. We'll look at the properties that need work. You know, the kind of average that we're looking at is around a 20 to 25 percent discount because we get on average around 10, 10 calls a day, you know, between five and 10 calls a day. Because we're sick of it. Because, first of all, we don't make our commission is based on the sale value. So if they've got it advertised at 100,000 and they charge 1% plus VAT, they're going to be making 1,200, which is 10%. Uh, sorry, so uh, yeah, 1,000. Uh, what's the VAT element of 1,000? 20% uh, of 1,000. Yeah, 200. So they'll be making 1,200 of that. Now, if an investor comes in straight away and he uh, tries to deduct 20% of the purchase price and now tries to purchase it for 80,000, he has also reduced the commission of the agent, which means that the agent is, going, is not going to be very incentivized to want to deal with that person. And these are deep and dark secrets from agents that I know. And they say, oh, shit, you're going to come in with an offer. You've got to try and incentivize us somehow because when you make a low offer, ultimately, my estate agents uh, literally, uh, my estate agents literally, unfortunately, suffers from that and will try and work with the person that gives us a higher figure, even though you may be able to work faster. So, sorry, so Carlos, so what's the name of the property app? It's called Property Investor. So if you go to the app store, it's called Property Investor. So Mark says, but will estate agents want to deal with you uh, if you're just starting out? They want to see history in the in this area. Not necessarily, Mark, because, you know, everyone starts out somewhere. Uh, but what, what it comes down to is what you're proposing to the agent. Now, one thing I'll say to you is that don't just go to the agent and say, guys, OK, my name is Mark uh, and I want to take all your properties on. Why don't you just try working with them on one property initially? See one property that actually... You think you know what to be fair that could be a great deal and go in and sit down and say guys hi my name's mark this is who i am this is what i do i don't propose to be the buyer because i'm not but i may have a purchaser and just so you know that the way that i operate is that i try and find uh properties for some of my investor clients and as a result they pay me a fee uh they pay me a fee so you know with all due respect it's not going to cost you anything for me to try and find you a buyer would you like to work together and believe it or not, if you if you frame it in the right way, if you frame it in the right way, there's no reason for them to work uh, not to not to work with you. And the reason why I say that, I work with multiple agents up and down the country, and they're sending me stuff every day of the week. So this is going on to my next point: is that I, I did a quick video on this uh, during the week, which hopefully you would have seen on some of the emails. Good. What makes you special? Because going back to my point about the investor, what is your USP? Um, for those that don't know, USP stands for your unique selling point. What makes you stand out in the crowd? Because let's face it, property investors, if you go on Facebook, everyone's a deal sourcer, everyone's doing rent to rent, everyone's doing service accommodation, everyone's doing HMOs, which are all great cash flow strategies. But what makes just to give you an example, what makes Natasha stand out from Mark? What makes Ali stand out from Carlotta? What makes um, Mikel stand out from Phil? Because if you're all approaching the same people, why would that estate agent do business with you over you? Is it because of your personality? Is it because of your approach to life and your positive approach to life? Is it because your ability to create positive uh, create positive solutions for the vendor where it doesn't cost the business that you're dealing with money? Is it your determination? Because in essence, what I'm basically saying, it all comes down to your mindset. Going back to the first slide that we put at the start of the presentation, your mindset is key to everything that goes on in your property business. So when you're... Here's your homework for today. And I, I do set homework, just so you know. Um, what makes you stand out from the crowd? So if you get a pen and paper out and you write down and say, well, okay, here's what property investors do. 
and here's what I do. What makes you special? So that when you speak to an agent, you say, well, okay, to be fair, I think I can help because this is what I can do. And I don't believe that anyone else can offer you that. So when they look at you, they say, okay, I get it. I understand why we should be working together and how we should be making money together. Does that kind of make sense? So if you were to actually sit down with a piece of paper and you can't find out your unique selling point, that's your first stumbling block. And that will be the thing that prevents you from going any further. The same with negotiations. When I, um, let's say I'm negotiating on a rent to rent deal with a landlord, I pretty much have got a whole list of benefits as to why they should deal with me over anyone else that contacts them. Now, first one is my credibility, that anyone can go online, they can research, they can type in who Arshilahi is, and as a result, they'll come up, I can't remember, with hundreds if not thousands of hits as to who is Arshilahi. Now, that has come up over a period of time. Now, I appreciate that not everyone can do that because starting out. But one of the things that you can do is try and align yourself with people who have a positive influence in the industry. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so uh, Natasha says, my USP is that I look for the solution for the seller rather than going for the sale. Now that's a great USP, so you look for the solution, but in essence, if I was to summarize that, Natasha, you're looking for the win-win scenario. Is that a strong enough USP or is that generic? Because if you were to ask a room full of property investors, how many of you try and create a win-win scenario for all parties involved? I would like to think 100% of the room would put their hand up. So is that then become a unique selling proposition? Something to think about. So that's why I'm talking that's why I'm talking about what makes you stand out in the crowd, because all of a sudden, if 100 hands have gone up in a room of 100 people, that's not unique. You are right in the middle of the crowd. So I'm not there. Uh, and so this is, what, this is what it comes down to. Why would the vendor choose you? Why would the agent decide to choose you? And once you've created those solutions, once you've created that USP, when you go to the agent, you should be saying, well, guys, you should be working with me because I am this person. I can produce these results. I will work within this time scale, and we can do this, this, and this. And as a result, we don't just, we'll work with one property initially, and off the back of that, providing that you're happy with me, and I'm happy with how we've both worked, Property number two, three, four, and five will then become a formality. So when I pitch to an agent, I never go and say, you know, I appreciate that you've got 50 properties, shall we run with all 50 properties? I'll say, let's try one. Now, the agent, the auction has I'm a work speaking to this week, I've got approximately 1,200 properties. Now, I've said to them, let's work with one, let's try one. Providing that you're happy with it, let's go with the rest or you know, we'll see how it progresses from there. So there's no pushing, there's no shoving from there. So does that kind of make sense? So are there any questions as to what, uh, anything that you want to ask so far as to where we are with uh, finding property deals? Because property deals, believe it or not, exist everywhere. Now, one thing I will say to you is that you've got to work according to your strengths. When you're dealing, and this is the USP, going back to the USP, working within your strengths. Now, I'm quite a confident person, so I can pick up the phone to anyone and say, okay, hi, Mr. Uh, Mr. Landlord. The reason why I'm calling is because I, I've seen that you've got some rooms empty, which I can see on sparing. Um, the reason for calling is because my name's Arshila here. This is who I am, this is what I do. Uh, I believe there may be some synergy there. Would you, would you like to explore this opportunity further? So something along those lines. But not everyone can do that because not everyone will have um, 
not everyone will have that confidence or the ability to do that. So we've got to have a look at what works with you and your ability. Are you great on the phone? Are you great at writing letters? Now, just so that you know, I'm, I'm not so great at writing letters, but I'm fantastic on the phone. The reason why I don't like writing letters is because how many words can a single side of A4 paper carry or hold? The reason why I say that is because when I'm putting a letter out to a vendor, am I going to be able to sell all my benefits on one side of paper? I'll probably want to write them a book, which means that they're going to lose interest very quickly. I know some people are very good at getting to the point on a piece of paper, whereas for me, I'd rather be able to pick up the phone to a vendor and say, okay, this is who I am, this is what I'm doing, let's try and break the ice, let's try and build rapport. As a, build, as a result of building rapport, the barrier, uh, the barrier lowers and we start to become uh, a little bit more open with each other. As a result of becoming open, we get the deal done. We start to understand what two main words are, pain and motivation. Every vendor, every seller has got some form of pain and motivation, and they're the key points that we need to trigger. Why should they deal with us? They should deal with us because I'm going to be able to hit the pain point and understand what the motivation is and find a curative and correct solution for them. Does that kind of make sense? So I'm just going through a couple of questions. So, Jam. Uh, Tom says the main objectives we get from uh, we're getting from the agent. Okay, so Tom, if you're getting objections from the agent, you've got to sit down and say, well, what questions are they asking us, and what are we not answering? Does that make sense? Because an agent wants to sell property. An agent wants to sell property because when they sell the property, they're making commission. That's the end goal. What's stopping us from working with them? What questions have they put in the way that we can not answer correctly, which is preventing us from working together? These are the questions that you should be asking yourself. What's prevented you from stopping? Okay, so Sam says, age can deter people because it's seen that as lack of experience. But being younger than my competitors means that I can prove, I have to prove I can work better than them, which means I have more motivation uh, than they do because I need to improve my work ethic. Sam, can I be completely blunt and honest? Age is nothing but a number. The amount of young entrepreneurs that I've met that are so sharp and will outwork any of the slightly older entrepreneurs. I, I, I had dinner last night. Um, with some, uh, with some friends of mine. One of them is 35 years old. This company is worth near 300 million. So, you know, okay, 35 years old, but he started that when he was quite young and he constantly kept, kept building. Now, if you keep waiting for you to become older and generate more experience, it will never happen. So you, at some point, have got to say, you know what, okay, I'm 17 or you're whatever age you may be, and you've got to work, work with that. Because, okay, you may not have the experience, but you've got energy and you've got the ability. So if you don't know the answer, you will go to someone to find the answer. Does that make sense? So there's lots of reasons why it should work for you. You've just got to understand what that, what that looks like for you. Are there any other questions before we go further? So we've got online, so we can, we can either pick up the phone and speak to someone or we can write a letter. Just bear in mind that when you write a letter to a vendor, it costs you on average about five pounds to, it costs you on average around five pounds to send out that letter. So it's gonna cost you on average three pounds to find the owner's details by going to landregistry.co.uk, putting in the house number and postcode and paying three pounds, it will give you the, vendor's name and potentially the vendor's address if they don't live at that property. That's when you then write the letter, uh, you put put it in an envelope and you put a stamp on it. And on average, you know, the letter, the envelope and the stamp will cost you on average around £2, so around £5 a letter. It's quite expensive. 
because if you're looking to scale this up and do quite a few properties, now just bear in mind that writing letters is a numbers game, as well as deal sources. Not every person you approach is gonna say yes to your proposition. That's not how it works. How it works is that you've got to be calling enough people, you've got to be speaking to enough people, you're going to be writing out to enough people for them to say, okay, I'll share, I've got your letter, or you know, I'm interested in speaking to you, how can we progress this further? Uh, and as a result, uh, as a result, you'll find that that will start to work. But if, you, if, you, if you're if you going to send out 500 letters a month, for argument's sake, that's two and a half thousand pounds which is equivalent to £30,000 a year on your marketing budget. Yes, you will get that back, but you have to speculate to accumulate. So Abina says, do you get a lot of deals from Spare Room? Absolutely loads, Abina. But you've got to be in a position where you want to be able to call them, you've got to spend time on the phone. The average phone call to a vendor should last between 15 to 20 minutes. So within that 15 to 20 minutes, you've got to have the ability to hold a conversation. And within that 15 to 20 minutes, you've got to be able to get to the point of understanding is what is the pain and the motivation. So first of all, breaking the ice, building rapport, understanding why those rooms vacant, understanding what the landlord's motivation is, understanding why the rooms have been vacant for so long and where, where the property is failing, and moving forward to finding a solution. Uh, so yeah, so on spare room, majority of them are rent to rent deals. So okay, so uh, another question. So what's the best way to get a big enough investor database to regularly sell deals? My biggest problem I've faced is selling deals, and, but and keep losing out. So question, uh, that's quite a straightforward one. So I've got an app called Property Investor App. So you can download it, uh, and we actually showcase. So if you've got a deal, we'll do a 50-50 split with you. So, so that's something to take into consideration, not the focus of tonight's session, but I thought I'd just drop that in there anyway. So, okay, so Dave says, so do you suggest dealing with agents versus direct to vendor? Now, Dave, I'm not saying do one or the other. I'm saying do both. Give yourself the best opportunity to find the deals and speak into both. Because for argument's sake, just to give you an example, there have been scenarios where the agent has not wanted to speak to us. You know, previously in the past, I was trying to do a deal with their auction house, and as a result, they refused to they refused to keep calling me back. So I actually found the vendor's details, and the vendor actually went off and did the deal. So it's a result is not a case of one or the other. It's a case of doing both, but just having a look at what's bringing you the best return on investment for your time and also money. So you might turn around and say, well, you know, in actual fact, I've put out, you know, 100 letters this month, I've had 10 responses, and that's bought me great, uh, you know, a great deal of level of success. Alternatively, you might say, well, I've spoken to five estate agents, and five estate agents give me 30 properties over, over the last few months, and it's taken me no time and no money to do that. So you've got to have a look at really what is the next, um, next way that you should be looking at. Uh, so okay, so moving on. One thing that we, one thing that I've created. So uh, Mikael has been asking me throughout this session. He goes, when's your next deal sourcing? Uh, Mikael has been asking, when is your next deal sourcing workshop, uh, trading weekend? Just so you know, I've decided to create a platform called the Elite Property Circle, which is ElitePropertyCircle.co.uk, and I've created actually, in actual fact, a deal trading online workshop which is pretty much a 52-week program, which is broken down into 52 modules, which gets released every Monday. A new module gets released every, uh, every Monday. And what it works is that I've created this because I get approached by so many people who show an interest in deal sourcing, but sometimes they don't just want to go on a workshop of, on a weekend and then find that they're stuck or can't progress any further. So what we've done, we've created almost like a work from home study where you can start at any time and has lots of ongoing support and is extremely content rich, pretty much the same as a workshop, but the ability to absorb what you learn as well. And you can, 
you can uh, all the sessions are recorded so therefore you can watch them as many times as you wish whereas in a workshop you get the ability to take it on once and leave it there so on the so you can go to elite property uh, elite property circle.co.uk have a look at online courses we've got um, the workshop which shows you exactly how to get started in property immediately it shows you we what we what I try and do is I try and give you the theory as to how we find vendors, but also the practicality as to how to do the deals as well. So understand the theory of making money and deal sourcing and the practical day-to-day -day aspects of deal sourcing. You can have access to all the documents that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, legals and templates to get you sourced, package and sell deals instantly. Give you access to a net, net, network of like-minded and motivated property professionals and investors. You get to be trained by hugely, hugely successful leading industry experts with a wealth of knowledge and experience. Now, what I mean by that is that, yes, I'll be running, uh, I do the workshops, so I record the workshops, but also on top of that, I've got some of my property investor, uh, sorry, some property experts, friends of mine that have come on and recorded some other sessions as well. Uh, you have the freedom to plan your training around your commitments. So like I said, we release them every Monday, but you watch them around your commitments, family and work. And it is a 52 week program to work through at your own pace, stacked with webinars, documents, links to websites, expert advice, articles and uh, videos. So just tell you a little bit about it. What the snapshot will do of the, a snapshot of this course will include how to train your mindset. Now, remember what I said, mindset is a massive thing. So what we want to do is how to tackle, uh, tackle the ups and downs of property. We'll be looking at all the different strategy types. So again, going back to not becoming a one trick pony, looking at below market value deals, rent to rent deals, lease option deals, development opportunities, planning gains, you know, commercial to residential, just to name a few. We'll be looking at compliance, which is one of the biggest things that you should be looking at as a deal sourcer. How to become compliant and how to be a legally compliant deal source and deal trader and how not to get caught out. How to create the perfect advert to sell deals and sales copy. How to maximize your output from Sparing, Gumtree, Facebook and Rightmove, which are all online platforms that you can start work with pretty much straight away. We have guest speakers that are going to be dealing with strategic finances. We've got paperwork required for rent to rent and how to negotiate terms. We'll be looking at how to sell the idea of lease options to vendors and agents, packaging lease option deals and know what you charge, and the guide to planning registers and how to use them, uh, project management costings and organization and keeping track, uh, keeping track to complete them on time. We do a massive section on auctions and how to make the most of them, service accommodation, how you can acquire them effectively, case studies of service accommodation deals, purchase for a pound, and exit strategies to protect you and your finances. So just so you know, guys, these are released in modules. So why would you join? Because it allows you to become part of a network of property professionals. You get to work at your pace, when you want, how you want, and it's all content driven and expert led. And we've got three basic packages. So we've got, uh, just so that you know, you pay on a month by month basis. It's not like you come on a workshop, you come on a workshop for a weekend and you pay a thousand pound and that's it. What we do, it's 52 weekly modules, which is equivalent to 12 months. So you pay 12, you pay 12 monthly installments, which means that it's perfect for anyone that wants to try and control their finances too. And you can go to elitepropertycircle.co.uk online courses. You've got three different packages. So you've got, you can pay 300 pounds a month, which means that you can start pretty much from any time. There's 52 weekly modules, which get released every Monday, including webinars, documents, and all the links. And it's 12 month membership to all the course content. Now, moving on, you've got the next one, which is three, four, nine a month which you can start again at any time, which is all the same as the basic package, but you get the bonus content of lifetime membership to all the course content, get access to a private investor only Facebook support group, and also any of my live workshops that I run 
you get 40% discount on any of the live workshops. So during, during the year, I run rent to rent workshops, deal sourcing workshops. So if you want to come on any of those, you get 40% discount. And then finally, we've got the elite package, which is the same as basic and standard, which you get 52 weekly modules, lifetime membership, plus you get the content of uh, bonus content of a scheduled monthly one to one coaching call with me personally, which is within the region of £200 a month. No, sorry, £200 an hour. Uh, you get exclusive access to JV deals with investors, so you can sell your deals to my investors. You get one free live workshop included. So if you decide to want, you want to come on my HMO workshop, you want to come on my rent to rent or uh, dual source and workshop, you can do that and that's completely free. You get access to a private only WhatsApp group and Facebook group and the opportunity to sell your deals to Ash's investor database where we do it on a 50 50 split basis. Uh, okay. Sorry, okay, there's some questions coming through which I'll answer. So you can see there's three different packages there. And then keep moving on. We also have a blueprint. So what I've created is a blueprint is to uh, flow charts as to how to deal with estate agents and vendors. These are all some of the documents that you'll get which are uploaded onto the platform um, by going to elitepropertycircle.co.uk. And you can see the kind of, this is just a draft curriculum as to what we've got there so you're looking at the different types of hmos how to package the bnb deals how to work the difference between commercial and bricks and mortar valuations how to look at strategic financing we look at rent to rent we're looking at uh, how to negotiate deals rent to rent direct with a landlord how to negotiate rent to rent deals with letting agents we look at the documentation, how to make it compliant, how to advertise the property. So we go through a lot over a 52 week program. And the aim is to try and get you to become a more rounded property investor. And it is all online so that every Monday you get a new module delivered to you to your inbox. And you pay on monthly installments. Remember, the benefits of it is that you work from home. You can start at any time. So you don't, you can start at any time. We start, the actual program actually starts on Monday, the 7th of October. There's ongoing support, which, and the workshop is completely content rich, which is, I like to think it's the same as going on a workshop, but the ability to absorb it and ask as many questions thereafter. So someone's just said, can we put the link back up? Okay, so there's the link. So going back to some of the questions. Um, 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 so Carla says, how do you get an agent or landlord to work with you as a newbie? Okay, so Carlotta, interesting question. How do you get an agent to work with you as a newbie? Now, okay, so I suppose question uh, I've got to ask you is that, why would they not work with you as a newbie? More importantly, how would they know that you're a newbie unless you actually go into that estate agent and say, hi, my name's Carlotta, I'm completely new to property. So unless you're actually going in and saying, guys, okay, hi, my name's Carlotta. No, just so you know, when you, when you set up a website for your business, do you set it to look as if it's a completely new business or do you set it up to look like it's an existing, ongoing, larger corporation than what you what you actually are because you should be going out set your stall out say hi my name's Carlotta uh, you know this is who I am this is what I can do your question they shouldn't even be questioning your experience because they should not even have known that if they ask a question how long have you been involved in property just say that well I've been involved in the network of property for quite a while but I'm now just started to branch out by myself, but I have an experience of a, a vast amount of experience. So there's no reason why that should even come into play. Does that make sense? So Tom says, what do you include in letter which you send out to the vendor? Now, okay, Tom, you've got to really, the letter is extremely difficult to make sure You've got to make sure that the letter covers all the points as to what you're looking to achieve. Have you ever heard of a marketing term called AIDA? A-I-D-A, attention, interest, desire and action. 
you've got to make sure that you cover all four points. How do you create the attention? How do you maintain the interest? How are you going to get the desire which will ultimately create the action point, which is for them to call you and say, Tom, I received your letter. This is who I am. Uh, this is where my property is. Would you like to come over and have a chat? Does that kind of make sense, Tom? Because the letter, are you pitching that you want to do a rent to rent? Are you pitching that you want to buy it? Are you pitching that you're uh, an investor? Are you pitching, what are you pitching? What's your, what is it that, you've got to have a look at what exactly is it that you're after? You might turn around and say, hi, uh, my name's Tom. I've recently just purchased some properties in the area. I'm also looking to acquire more properties. Uh, I, I'm, I'm writing this letter because I understand that you've got property for sale. Would it be worth us just initially having a chat to see how we can potentially work together? Something on that lines, but all depends on you and what you're looking to offer. Are there any other questions? So we've gone through the presentation in quite, you know, we've, there's a lot of content that we've covered there. Yeah, especially when it comes down to agents and dealing with mindset, because mindset is the biggest thing. Uh, going back to Carlotta's question about mindset, how do you get the agent to work with us as a newbie? For me, the mindset shouldn't have been about, the newbie should not have even been a question. The mindset should, for me should have been, they shouldn't be in questioning my integrity as a property investor. And they shouldn't be questioning my integrity. Uh, they shouldn't be questioning my time frame within property because I'm giving them such great value that we're going to be working together and making money together. Does that make sense? So, are there any other questions regarding property? So, uh, okay. So, Avina says, um, "Is it difficult to get lease option agreements?" No, because okay. What is a lease option? A lease option is pretty much a rent to rent with the option to purchase attached to it. So if a vendor is looking to uh, do a rent to rent on the property, you simply ask the question, are you considering, would you consider selling the property within the future? If so, could I have the first option to purchase on that? And as a result, there's no reason why uh, if you're taking the property on, you've already done the hard work and you've got the rent to rent, you attach the option to purchase on there and that's your lease option. Uh, okay, so, so Mikhail says, when is the next deal sourcing trailer weekend? Okay, so Mikhail, if you if you do want to come on the deal sourcing workshop a weekend, we will be we will be running some within the within the near future. I think there's what actually one. Uh, potentially on the 19th and 20th of October, but I'll confirm that if you if you do want to know about that, uh, just give me a shout on that tomorrow, and I'll have a chat with you about that. Alternatively, the one thing that we do we do do one on one. So if you want to come and spend the day with me in the office, the cost of that is 1,500 pounds plus VAT, uh, and we tailor that according to exactly what you want on your location. So we'll create almost like a patch for well, we'll look at your location. We'll have a look at all the implications, such as is it Article Four, is it a, you know planning legislation, and all the other bits that you need to be aware of about that location. And we'll create almost like a plan of action for you to to move forward. So, if you've got any questions, feel free. You can uh, email me directly, which is arsh at arshilahi.com. Alternatively, if you want, you can call me. Uh, you've got my mobile number there. Give me a call tomorrow, and if you want, we can have a chat about the program, about the Elite Property Circle, and how we can make that work for you. Finally, if you want to know more information about what the Elite Property Circle is all about, go to elitepropertycircle.co.uk, or you can go to my personal website, which is arshilahi.com. You can find me also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram please feel free to drop us a quick follow on any of the above. And then finally, I'm going to leave you with a quote. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. And if you go out every day with that mindset and with that phrase in mind, 
there's no reason why you won't do deals and there's no reason why you won't progress in business. But more importantly, uh, so if we could get away something for tomorrow. Okay, sorry, I'm just uh, going through some of the questions. So if we could get away something for tomorrow, do something today that your future self will thank you for. Um, so that could be anything. So Tom says, well, what would that be? So are you setting up the business today that's going to thank you for the future? So are you going to come on the training that's going to thank you and pay you constant rewards for the future? You're going to have a look at what all these things are going to be. You know, are you putting things in place now which is going to help you throughout the whole process? So if you like the thought of anything that we've had a chat about and you want to have a quick chat, Please feel free to, you know, um, someone said, can you put my mobile number back up? Feel free to give me a call. Uh, let's have a chat. Uh, okay, so um, someone said, when does the online, uh, when does it actually launch? We actually launch it on Monday the 7th, but what we're doing, we're getting everyone to sign up ready now so that you can start to take action pretty much straight away. If people, if, uh, just to give you a, an example, if someone said, I want to sign up tonight and I want to start tomorrow, I can pretty much get you access to material for you to start working on it straight away. So don't let that be a deterrent. If you're saying, okay, I'm ready to go, I want to make this a success, and I want to get started straight away, I can get you content out to get you started tomorrow. The actual programs and launches on Monday, the 7th of October, which is seven days time, uh, whilst we just put the finishing touches to it, and let's get it moving forward. So, guys, on that note, I wish you a great rest of Sunday, a uh, great rest of the weekend, and I will speak to you all very soon. Take care, good night, and God bless.